Many sites across the web aren't fully utilizing their blog. They're either not formatted in a way that's easy to read, or if they are, they still aren't turning page visitors into customers. So if you're someone who has a blog or something similar, for customers to find your website through search engines, then it makes sense to ensure that when customers get to your site, that you're giving them a way to continue the conversation with some sort of call to action. Now embedding a call to action on our page can be done in a variety of different ways. We can put a call to action at the bottom of the page after they've finished the post, or another common way is putting the call to action to the side of the post. But one different way that I think works great to increase signups is using a page scroll to trigger a call to action. So part of the way down our post, we can trigger this call to action. And in this way, we already know that our user is some way interested in the content. And so we can give them a call to action that's some kind of offer that's relevant. So this kind of trigger and call to action is exactly what we're gonna look at how to build today. So stick around. So we're gonna jump directly into our project and we'll go to our blog post. Go to our CMS page for the blog post. And we're gonna start off by building the call to action box. So I'm gonna drag in a div, just pop that anywhere. This is gonna be for the box and it's gonna be fixed to the page down in the bottom right hand corner. We'll pop that down to the bottom right. And what I'll do, I'll just put some content in it for now so we can actually see it. I'll give it a heading and a paragraph and a maybe a button. So if we want, instead of using a button to take them to a separate page, we can instead embed a form, a Webflow form, uh, for some kind of email or newsletter sign up. So for now, I'll just go back to my div. I'll give it a fixed width, make that 300, maybe a bit more than that. And I'll give it a background, make that a gray, and make sure that it's floating above our content. I'll just give it a Z index. So I'm gonna pop it out of the corner a bit. I'll make it 30 pixels from the bottom and 30 from the side. Actually, I'll give it a little bit more so that it lines up with our buttons. I'll make that 50. I'll give this a name. This is our fixed call to action box. And we'll give it some padding. Maybe about 32 for now. We can adjust that later if we want to. And I'll make sure that these are the right size. So this is only gonna be an H3. I'll give that a class. Maybe that'll be a bit big. Maybe I'll make it about that size. And paragraph we can leave as is. And so this is going to be our title. And just make that a bit shorter. Probably don't need that much text. Maybe a little bit more. And then we'll give our button a class. Maybe that's a tiny bit big. Maybe I'll use a smaller button. And then we'll just make this book a demo. Now that looks pretty good. I'm going to super quickly tweak the design a little bit to make it pop a little bit better. So now that's looking a little bit better. But before we add in any sort of page trigger, we're going to focus a little bit more on the copy. So what we're going to do is give some kind of offer that's going to be intriguing for our customer. So rather than get started, maybe we'll do something like save more money and time with automation. Learn how X amount of customers reducing stress in their whoopsies in their business by utilizing Whirl in their systems. And putting emphasis on copy like this is important because it doesn't matter how fancy we make our website, if we're writing in a way that customers find boring or aren't gonna to relate to, then they're not gonna be enticed to want to move to the next step. So now that we've done a copy, I'm gonna add a little exit box. I'm just going to add in an exit icon, make that a little bit smaller and it's going to be absolute to the top right, push it down a little bit and to, to the left a little bit. This is going to be our exit call to action icon. 
we'll make sure people know that it's clickable, making it a pointer. And then if people click on it, it's gonna hide our call to action. And we can save that. And now the last thing we need to do is add in our trigger so that people are only seeing this part of the way down the page. Now what we're not gonna use is use a page trigger. Cause even if we use while the page is scrolling, we will be able to show the pop-up when people scroll down. But when people scroll up, the pop-up will then hide again. And what we want instead is when someone moves part of the way down the page, the pop-up comes and then it stays there. So instead what we're gonna do is add a hidden box to our page that lets Webflow know that the user is halfway down the page. So we're just gonna add in a, a div block and I'm just gonna add that to the same container that our actual content is in. And it's gonna be zero pixels wide and zero pixels high. And then the position is going to be absolute inside of this div. And we're gonna make it 50% down this div. Now this is quite a small blog post. Let's see how that looks for a longer one. So about there on our page, that's when the pop-up's gonna come up. I'm actually gonna put that slightly up a little bit, so it comes in a little bit earlier, about 40% uh, down the page. And this can just be our call to action trigger block. And so now we're gonna add an interaction. We will say that when it scrolls into view, that's when we're gonna trigger our call to action. So I'll add a new one. And so initially, this is not on the page. So I'm gonna move this out of the page and I'll also make sure that it's hidden. So these are both the initial state. And then once the actual trigger is in view, we're gonna make it visible. We're gonna make that, and then we're gonna move it into place. So move. And the vertical, I'm just gonna make zero, which is perfectly where we set it. And I maybe make it at ease in. So it kind of pops into place once we've scrolled down the page. So we can save that. We'll exit out of that. We'll go back to the top of our page and we'll see how that looks by previewing it. So here we are in our blog page. And we scroll down. And now that we're partway down the page, that call to action has popped up. And if we scroll back up, it's still gonna be there. If we scroll all the way down, it's still there. And then to get rid of it, we can just hit that little X. Now, the only other thing I'd wanna do is see how it looks on different screen sizes. So on tablet, that looks okay. On mobile landscape, that looks okay. And then on mobile portrait, that's definitely not a good fit. So I'm just gonna change this. Width is going to be auto, and then it'll be fixed. 20 from the left, 20 from the right, and 20 from the bottom. And I'm pretty happy with that. And again, now that we have our trigger and our call to action, we can instead change this into an email signup if we wanted to, collect emails, uh, or we can use any kind of pop-up that we want. So instead of being a small side pop-up, it could be a full screen pop-up or any other way we want to. So that's all for page scroll triggers for today. But if you wanna learn more about maximizing the results of your Webflow website, I have a newsletter all about exactly that. So find that link in the description. Otherwise, let me know in the comments if you like this one or what you want to see a future video on and I'll see you on the next one.